Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, and I attend the Brantford Inventors Club on the second Wednesday of every month at the rail station restaurant. And uh, usually give them an update at the end of the night on May the 11th, Wednesday night. Welcome to the Brantford Inventors Club tonight. We have uh, Mr. Mike St. Amand, our local from the Conservative in the Ontario government. You also need, what you're talking about, is, is the angel network in place to provide that seed funding to get the project going. I, I'm sure you've all been around to your relatives and they're probably all tapped out. And your question is, how do you get it to the next phase? And that's, that, that's the challenge everybody faces. And no, it's not the banking system. The banking system is, is working fine. It is working okay, and I wouldn't say it's working fine. What what what's what's missing in in Canada, if I can sort of diverge to answer your question, is what's what's missing is is the venture capital for early stage finance. I can tell you, I ran I ran a two billion dollar fund, of which we invested. 10% of our fund on, on, on seed finance. Yeah, but that's a piggy bank. We're talking about credit, creation of new chips. Well, the credit credit emerges if you've got a, a business opportunity that makes sense. Now you can't blame you, you can't blame the banker if you go to a banker with a business plan in which the things don't make sense. That's the reality. I was there. How many things make sense got turned down? Explain that. Hey, John. John, yeah. just let him finish. Okay? All right. I don't, I don't mind the debate because I, I, I know. think we do. We, we do. do. <laughs> You're on a touchy subject. Yeah, here. when John in the bank, you will be debating for the night for this. I want, I want interest free chips. I don't want to bore your savings. I see. Okay. Your presentation will be through. You left John off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, I don't know the crowd, but I, I'm happy to answer any question. If you got something you disagree with, let me know. I mean, it's you, so, you know, know, great to talk. Usually, what we do is go ahead when you have to finish, then you can have the questions yeah. and the interruptions and things, you know, like that. Okay. But, but then I'll cool. just keep it alive. Well, another half an hour. <laughs> Stuxnet virus. S, S T U X N. S T U X N E T. S T U X. Yes. It was like a red October aimed at Iran and hit somewhere else. Uh, and with that, our uh, next and last speaker is uh, Mr. Johnny Termel. I'm sure he's got a few things to say on our wonderful marijuana laws and they've changed to the considerations and all that. Lots of things are pretty good that way. You got it, John. Okay, different topics tonight. The election, I never got so much media. They kept calling me and asking, why aren't you running? Well, here's the Guelph uh, newspaper, perennial candidate Jermel picks dream team of federal candidates. I didn't run. I had a guy in Brantford who wanted to do interest-free loans at the Bank of Canada, so I didn't have to run. And I said, wow, I could look out across the whole country for every little party that ever supported the Let software, and I can say these guys, if you vote for them, would probably let me reprogram the Bank of Canada's computer to work like PayPal, but interest-free. And instead of Visa to buy in, you can buy in with an IOU for time. And instead of paying with cash and Visa, you can pay with time. I said, wow. So all of, I went around there, Christian Heritage had in the past supported Let's, Libertarians, uh, Marxist Leninists, no kidding, they like Let's too. And uh, the Greens, it was on their platform in the 80s, even though they took it off recently. Even a rhino. So I looked across the country and I picked candidates everywhere and I said, this is my dream team, who probably, marijuana party candidates, if you vote for them, will let me reprogram the Bank of Canada's computer to give us interest-free loans so that we can finance free marijuana. Now, what kind of political campaign is that? Well, I'm saying, wow, what an interesting thing to happen. But Fukushima exploded just before nomination day. Okay, Fukushima.
machine exploded just before nomination day. And I'm going, whoa, this is seriously worse than Chernobyl. And I had read a book, Deadly Deceit, on all the deaths due to Chernobyl. And I did a video called Big Lie of Low Level Radiation, just after the election started. Wow, 900 views in the first two days. I figured this is going to go viral, explaining to people why it's dangerous. Here's the big lie. You got a piece of nuclear plutonium a meter away, burning you a little bit. But if you move it into one centimeter away, a hundred times closer, well, it's not a hundred times more damaging, it's a hundred times squared. Squared law. And guess what? When you ingest a particle of plutonium, and it's only one micron away from your cell, that's a million times closer, squared, the damage. I figure, holy jeez, we better warn Canadians, get out of here comes this plume from Japan, and you can see it on, if you look, and you can see these huge plumes of radioactivity hitting California, and they're announcing in San Francisco, get out of the rain, you know, and don't drink the milk. And then a couple of weeks later in France, get out of the rain, don't drink the milk. But in Canada, here it is, Health Canada website. The frequency of data collection by House Health Canada has been decreased due to the low level radiation detected. And they decreased the frequency to zero. So instead of saying they turned off the fallout detectors to avoid a panic, they just simply said, we've reduced the frequency of collection to no more as the plume hit the West Coast. And it's the heaviest plume, the first one with the maximum plutonium and contamination Hitting Harper's heroes, I call them. The kids who gave up 10, 15, 20 years of lifespan by going out to play in the radiation. We Canucks are tough. We're not scared of a little radiation. Anyway, too late now. Your kids, when they start getting these weird cancers and leukemias in the next few years, miscarriages, birth defects in the next year, you're going to say, Harper, why didn't you warn us? Harper's heroes. Isn't it neat that he got elected again? And now when the consequences of what he did comes in, we're going to be able to say, there's the guy who said turn off the fallout detectors and don't warn Canadians to get out of the radioactivity. Well, it's too late for most of us. We're all going to die a little bit sooner, probably, because the Rothschilds are running the world game and everything is built cheap by the lowest bidder, right? And that means that every nuclear power plant out there, like the book Deadly Deceit shows, is leaking radiation, and people living downwind have excess deaths. So he got all the death statistics, the mortality statistics. Two countries published states, Germany. And he found, guess what? Low-level radiation is more dangerous than the high-level stuff that zaps you in an x-ray. The low level that gets inside you is going to burn out a piece of stock code in your DNA that says to the cell, time to die, let the other guy take over, now that you've replicated. Now there's no more stop switch. Replicates it to another with no stop switch. 4, 8, 16, and you got a tumor. So, oh, we're going to have a whole misery, a horror show. Helen Caldecott, the environmentalist, said it's the worst catastrophe in human history. I've already said that in my video. So, with the election coming up, I said, wow, here's my chance with a guy in my riding I can vote for to try and pull a coup that had never been pulled before, except once in Alberta in the 30s by Bill Aberhart. And this is the book, The Social Credit Movement in Alberta, The Rise of a Group of people who were tired of being busted and broke and starving and they took power. And it was a radio preacher who led them and then he got screwed in the end. But the point is, what a story, an exciting story. And he said, here's what I'm going to do. Here's my slate of social credit candidates. And if you vote for them, then you get me. And I said, geez, okay, I'm going to do that too. So I picked my slate. Christian heritage, Marxist, Leninist, Libertarians, uh, Greens. Well, I fill up the Greens at the end. And I said, here's a slate of people I trust might most likely let me reprogram the Bank of Canada's computer, mass-produce marijuana we're going to need to fight off our cancers. 
Now, the people who don't know that marijuana kills cancers, and like I said at the end of my videos, if you don't get my dream team, and you don't spread the word and get your kids out of the radiation, you deserve to die. And I meant it. People out there who didn't get their kids out of the radiation, when it happens, they're going to think back that shit John Turnell was on the net saying, take baking soda, you know, get iodine, eat your spinach, drink your urine, anything that's killed the cat, and smoke your marijuana now. And you guys who ain't got any, <laughs> when the cancers start, what are you going to do? Harper ain't going to let you have it, right? Now, Layton, he's pro, he said, but you never know a politician, right? Elizabeth May got elected. She's pro-marijuana, she said. You never know. But still, that's good news in that respect. So I said, I'm going to make my campaign. These are the most likely people to let me mass-produce the marijuana that we're going to need to fight the cancers that are coming from the incredible blunder that Harper did by turning off the fallout detectors. Oh, we're not measuring the radiation in milk no more. Which is how the majority of it gets into the kids. It falls with the rain. And I've got two videos saying, gee, I wonder if the plutonium in, is seeding the clouds and making it rain for the last month when we've only had five days of sun. Right? It's been rain, rain, rain. I'm saying, wow, is it the plutonium? And number two video, I said, gee, I wonder if the plutonium in the rain is making the streets slipperier. Because water, you know, H2O, that's like oxygen, that's uh, eight neutrons, eight protons, weight of about, uh, and two hydrogens, weight of about 18. But uranium, that's 238, two big, big mothers in there. So you got all these little ball bearings under normal circumstances that your car's driving on. All of a sudden, you got these big ones. And I'm wondering if the presence of a lot of big, radioactive, metallic ball bearings in with the little ones is making it slipperier. Because I felt when I was driving, the one time I went out in two weeks, two times, that I felt that it was really slipperier. I'm wondering, wow, could it be that, you know, the radio, the, new, the plutonium is making it slipperier? So anyway, it's too late. Most of us have been seriously, most of you actually, I hope I've stayed out long enough, you know, and done what I need. I luckily have all the natural remedies I've been talking about, you know, to help me avoid, and I'm scared of it. But here I am on my Facebook page and to my net, and I'm saying, come on, friends, get your kids out of the radiation. You know, five people that I know of reproduced my message and warned their friends and said, hey, you know, maybe we shouldn't go outside like the Americans and the French. But the rest of the people just sent their kids outside. We're Canadians. We're tough. Captain Canada, you know, Captain Canada. So anyway, that was it. I decided I didn't have to run. I organized my dream team, and I did my videos about the radiation that's coming and how, what I'm doing to avoid it. Now, the one clue I'm going to do on that before I move on is baking soda. Baking soda? Yeah. Lucky, cheap baking soda. Baking soda, they use it when they're cleaning up nuclear spills because it binds with uranium. Plus, it also keeps your body alkaline, which is not conducive to cancer growth. So I'm telling everyone, I'm starting, I do a half a teaspoon in a glass of water four times a day, and uh, people might think it's you know, slightly you know, salty. Big deal, it ain't hard, but I mean, if it's gonna make, make a difference, I'm, I'm not gonna not take that chance, you know? Wow, it's an extra free chance that if they clean radioactive spills with baking soda, maybe I don't wanna have, you know, grab some uranium and just flush it out, that's what I'm looking for. So. You know, and I've been doing the iodine Lugol, and basically radioactive iodine, your thyroid picks up iodine and loves it. So you may as well saturate your thyroid with the real stuff before the radioactive stuff gets here. But it dies every eight days, half-life. That's no problem. In eight days, half gone. In 16 days, quarter gone. In 24 days, an eighth gone. And in a month, a sixteenth of it left. Sorry. Most of it's gone. But plutonium, well, that's a half a million years. And the fuel used in Fukushima, was MOX, which was a mixture of plutonium and uranium, and that's the stuff that blew. And that's why we're going to be hit with, well, we're going to be hit with cancers and birth defects and miscarriages in the next year. And uh, like I said, if you heard what I said and you went out in the nuclear radiation, well, you deserve to die. You, know? you didn't warn your kids, you didn't warn your family. I'm doing videos going, ah, you know? Vote for the TV parties, you deserve to die! 
when you can vote for the dream team who are going to let me reprogram the Bank of Canada's computer into a big PayPal, interest for each, payable in cash or time, and mass produce marijuana that kills cancer. <laughs>